Good afternoon, everyone. We have gathered here today in this Alexandria City High School King Street Campus Auditorium from different walks of life, some of us, many of us from different historical periods in the Alexandria City High School history, and not even just to mention the Alexandria City Public School history overall. But no matter the diverse and multiple origins of our various stories, we have gathered here today in this one place as one city and one community to celebrate and memorialize the remarkable journey, historical career, and incredible life of our colleague, our friend, and a forever titan, Mr. Louis Kokonis. Today in this sacred moment of remembrance, let us find solace in the collective embrace of one another. As we join together to cherish the beautiful memories and the indelible mark left by one who touched our lives in a myriad of beautiful ways. Whether you knew Mr. Kokonis as a family member, and we are honored by the presence of his family who are here with us today. Whether you are his family, or a friend, a colleague, or a student, we begin this celebration of historical service in a collective spirit of unity, service, and love. As one Alexandrian family, we express a deep sense of gratitude for the time we were privileged to share with Mr. Kokonis and the nearly 65 years of service that he rendered unto Alexandria City Public Schools. During today's celebration, we will hear from Mr. Kokonis' family, ACPS school officials, former high school principals, his students from the 2023-2024 school year, and receive from the ACHS Chamber of Orchestra, ROTC, and the Ensemble Choir. Mr. Kokonis' service to ACPS is indeed historic, and it is our honor to celebrate his legendary career with his friends, family, and colleagues. And with that, first, please welcome to the podium our ACPS Superintendent, Dr. Melanie K. Wyatt. Good evening and welcome students, staff, and community members, and our number of school board members. If you could in just indulge me for a moment as we begin this celebration of historical service in honor of Mr. Louis Kokonis, who is the longest serving teacher in the history of Alexandria City Public Schools Division. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge some very special guests, and please forgive me if I did not see you coming in, but I think it's important to note that people have taken time out of their busy schedules to come and show their dedication and support to you, the family. If you could help me welcome um, Dr. Michelle Reef, who is our school board chair. We, if you can stand when I call your name, we have Megan Alderton, our school board members. Other school board members include Ashley Simpson Baird, Tammy Ignacio, and former school board member Mark Eaton. I'm sorry, I see one more face in the crowd, Mr. Abdella Newby. Also, please help me welcome our vice mayor, Ms. Amy Jackson. We do have a number of former um, administrators from Alexandria City High School. We have John Porter and Pete Ballas, Carolyn Lewis, and Bob Stoy. Thank you for being here. And speaking of school board members, we have a school board member who was a former student, so you know of Mr. Kokonis' impact. Please help me welcome Mr. Moon, who was a former student and with the Fairfax City School Board. 
And of course, there are a number of countless colleagues and students and friends who are here today. But if you all know me and you know my heart, I am going to take an extra minute to say to our students, if you are here and you are a student, current or past, if you could please stand. That speaks volumes to the impact. We also welcome Mr. Kokonis' family members, as I've said before, his many former students, ACPS community members and stakeholders who are here with us today to remember the dedicated and soft-spoken teacher who was reliable and a welcome fixture in the ACHS classrooms until his last day of teaching. We come together today to remember a teacher and a colleague whose passion for teaching math and unwavering dedication to his students made him a legend at Alexandria City High School and whom ACPS had the privilege of having, and again I say the privilege of having on its staff for more than half a century. That is an amazing feat and one we are here to celebrate today. Over the course of 60 years of teaching, his career at ACHS, Lou, as we called him, Coconus, was known to scores of students and staff members, some of whom were his students years ago and who are also joining us to honor his legacy at this special celebration. Thank you to the hardworking committee of people who organized today's celebration of historical service. It truly reflects how many lives Mr. Kirkone is truly touched. Many of you have likely heard me talk about having an impact and a difference in the lives of others. And in his 91 years of life on this earth, yes, 91 years, Mr. Kirkonis is a true example of such a citizen. In 2019, as Mr. Kirkonis celebrated six decades of teaching, he was honored in a House Joint Resolution number 727 of the Virginia General Assembly, which stated, Louis Kokonis has impacted his passion for lifelong learning to his students, many of whom went on to become physicists, engineers, doctors, and professors. The ACPS community, in particular ACHS, is so very grateful to Mr. Kirkonis for his dedicated years of service to the teaching profession and to ensuring all students receive a high quality education. I had to stop on that one for a moment because I do have some words here, but I can tell you, if you walk into his classroom, this is what you saw each and every day. Excuse me for getting a little emotional at that. I just remember a comment that he said to me when I walked in and interrupted his classroom. <laughs> By the way, you don't do that. <laughs> this is what is often seen as the challenging subject matter of advanced math. In 2022, ACPS had the opportunity to help facilitate a CBS-conducted interview that was shown across the nation as the story went viral and captured Mr. Kokonis in action, where he also voiced his thoughts on what motivated him to continue his teaching journey well into his 90s. If you haven't seen it, take a moment and Google it. It will inspire you, very much like Mr. Kokonis' service has inspired so many of us this evening and over the past 60 years. Mr. Kokonis leaves a lasting imprint on the students he taught, the staff he interacted with, and the community he served. And his legacy lives on with the Kokonis Legend Scholarship, which is made available through the Scholarship Fund of Alexandria. Thank you, Mr. Kokonis. Thank you, Mr. Kokonis. Thank you, Mr. Kokonis. You will be missed and we will always aspire to cherish your memory by doing our best to follow your example. Thank you. Now, if you could please welcome Professor Hilton to the stage.
Uh, as just said, my name is Nicole Hilton. Um, my relationship to Mr. Kokonis, or as I knew him, my Uncle Lou. Uh, my grandfather is Nick Kokonis, sitting right here in the front row, uh, Lou's brother. And my mom is Angie Hilton, who's Lou's niece. So that's my street cred. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone, so much for coming. The number of people who are here today is a testament to how many lives Lou touched. He would probably be embarrassed by all of this attention. He was always so shy and humble and never wanted to be the center of attention. Lou just wanted to teach and inspire others. He inspired me to pursue teaching, although we chose very different subjects, as my degree is in English. We have been overwhelmed by the amount of support we have received from the Alexandria public school system and community. We have heard so many wonderful stories over the last two weeks about Lou. This school really was his home. He would come here on the weekend, even when there was construction going on and he had to wear a hard hat, just to check up on things or host study sessions. Whether he was here physically or not, mentally, I think he was always here. Lou's most frequent accessory just about everywhere he went was his tote bag full of papers. Even on holidays, Lou would find a quiet corner of the couch and set up shop grading homework and working out math problems. I think it really speaks to his dedication to teaching and to his students. Teaching really was his passion. We appreciate and are grateful for the kindness you showed him over the last 60 plus years. There are many stories I could tell you about my Uncle Lou, but we would be here for a while, so let me just tell you this one. Many of you may not know this, especially because looking at him, you wouldn't guess it, but Lou had a voracious appetite. He would eat everything from octopus to Chinese food. Whenever we went out to dinner with him, we always had to order extra salad because Lou would have plate after plate. He loved fresh fruits and vegetables. Once at his apartment, he reached into his fridge and grabbed a carton of blueberries. I asked him if they were his favorite fruit. No, he said, I really don't like them, but I eat them because they're good for me. I've since made that logic part of my own diet and daily routines. I don't like spinach, but I eat it because it's good for me. I don't like exercise, but I walk every day because it's good for me. On and on. I think it's good advice. I don't know if it means I'll make it to 91, but it can't hurt, probably. It reminds me of that saying, do at least one thing a day that scares you. Blueberries shouldn't scare you exactly, but I think we could all stand to do one more thing that we don't like because it is good for us. For some of us, myself included, that might be math although that does scare me. Many of us relied on Lou as a mentor or teacher, someone we sought advice from when we needed it. In the math department, go ask Lou was a common phrase. Now, since we can no longer go ask Lou, we have to think, what would Lou do? When I think about him, the two qualities that come to mind are kindness and passion. Lou was kind to everyone, whether they were a student or a server at a restaurant. Rather than assuming the worst in someone, think about how you can approach them from a perspective of kindness instead. Lou was also very determined, stubborn even. He always found a way to accomplish whatever he set his mind to. Find your passions and pursue them. And know that you don't have to be the loudest person in the room to be successful. We thank you all again for coming and celebrating the life of such a wonderful man with us. Thank you very much, Dr. K. Wyatt, to Professor Nicole Hilton for your remarks and presentation on this evening. At this time, we are excited to welcome the ACHS Chorus as they come and they offer their selection in uh, memorial or remembrance of our staff member, Mr. Luca Conis.
Thank you, Mr. Thorpe, and to all of our students with our ACHS course this afternoon. Tonight's program is a reflection of the Alexandria City staff and our surrounding community, our students, our staff, who have come together and wanted to recognize and make sure that we celebrated the life of Mr. Kokonis. Um, there are a number of staff members that we could call on right now just to recognize them for their work. But when we talked with the committee who helped plan this particular event, one of the things they said to us was, we want this night to only be about Mr. Kokonis, not making a big deal of any one particular person who played a role in planning tonight's celebration. For us, the team felt like that was reflective of the type of person Mr. Kokonis was. Never wanted the spotlight, but always gave his best to make the service he provided young people the best that it could be. And so I just wanted to pause tonight and recognize all of the ACHS staff, specifically the math department, and our students, as well as every participant who has contributed to this program. We want to say thank you and we want to recognize the Alexandria City community for the work that they are doing tonight, specifically to recognize and to celebrate Mr. Kokonis' historical service. With that, we're going to welcome to the stage our next speaker, a previous administrator at Alexandria City High School, Ms. Carolyn Lewis, and she will be followed by former Alexandria City High School principal, Mr. Peter Ballas. At this time, please welcome to the stage, Ms. Carolyn Lewis. Good afternoon. What shall I say in honor of Mr. Lou Kokonis? Certainly, I will repeat some of what you have heard, read, or seen already. To repeat it only confirms the impact he has had on so many of us. Dr. Martin Luther King once wrote, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart of grace and a soul garnered by love. I believe that these beliefs are what have provided the framework for how Mr. Kokonis lived his life of service with grace and love. Let's take a moment to reflect on how the name Luke Kokonis can be interpreted. He was loyal. 66 years of teaching and the right old age of 90 plus is how long he taught math in the state of Virginia. He was outstanding. His ability to successfully impart knowledge to students was remarkable and effectively propelled him above most math educators. He was understanding he saw more in his students than they could see in themselves. Consequently, they found success even when they had doubt. He was kind. His gentle and welcoming demeanor, his smile and that twinkle in his eye when he spoke was contagious. Only second to that in the story the night before Christmas that St. Nick had. He was optimistic, armed with a most positive attitude. He believed all students could learn and convey the, that message to his students, often going over and beyond to offer students additional help. He was knowledgeable. Being the teacher of the highest level of math offered to students in this school system, his students responded constantly by passing designated national exams and that proved 
that not only did he have knowledge, but he also had the ability to impart it. He was original. He was one of a kind in his dedication. I will never forget the night he worked the dance and he came with his papers and books and sat beside the door and corrected papers <laughs> while he was on duty. I said, go, Mr. Coconas. <laughs> his commitment and his enthusiasm to the teaching profession was, re was reflected every day and in every way. He was noteworthy. He was such an unusual educator. We did not see a Luke Coconas every day. His professional, approachable, effective, and responsible demeanor propelled him above so many others. He was interesting. Not only was he a master teacher, but he was a mechanic who took pride in keeping his car running like a brand new oil machine. <laughs> he was successful. Without a question, his longevity and tenure in this school system is proof of his success. This is the Mr. Luca Conus I remember. I hope you were fortunate enough to share the same thoughts as I did. We are so grateful that he passed our way. Thank you. Good afternoon, and welcome to all of the friends, colleagues, and loved ones of Luke Aconis. Um, especially um, heartwarming to see the wonderful math department all together. I'm honored to be here today to say a few words to help commemorate the longest serving and great, greatest titan of all, Mr. Louis Aconis. Lou served over six decades in ACPS. And at age 91, he was still teaching his students as one of the most driven educators in the profession. His longevity as a teacher is not just a testament to the Titans and to ACPS, but to education overall. Lou embodied all of the qualities we think of when we think of educators. He was passionate, dedicated. He loved his content and his students. He loved his colleagues and he was driven to come to work every day to make a difference. Lou began his career during the term of US President Dwight D. Eisenhower and spanned 12 additional presidents, US presidents. During this time, Lou educated our youth during incredible paradigm shifts in our country and in our world, including the many battlegrounds of the Cold War, the Vietnam War, the Civil Rights Movement, desegregation of schools, major economic recessions, the AIDS epidemic, 9-11 terrorist attacks, the election of our country's first black president, and a global pandemic that shut down the world. Through all of this, Lou had to be more than a teacher of math content. He taught students about humanity. Lou saw this as his duty and responsibility, and it's what drove him to remain in the profession and to make a difference. One special time that I shared with Lou that I'll never forget is when we both participated in the Scottish Day Parade just before the pandemic, where he was being honored for reaching 60 years of service. It was my job, my honor, to be Lou's chauffeur. I'll always remember this day. It was cold with rain and snow on and off, and Lou and I got to the parade, hopped into the front seats of a Mini Cooper, and I was to drive him, and he was to wave at the crowds as we went along the route. It was during this experience that I got to learn so much about Lou. The parade began, I drove, he waved, and we talked. The crowds who braved the rain and snow waved at Lou and even screamed his name. I'd continually point to where the screams were coming from so he could direct his waves back, at the, at, back in that direction 
so they think he heard them and would know where they were coming from. The windows were almost all the way up. It was cold and rainy, so it wasn't his fault. We had light conversations during the parade, including one that I knew this was the prime opportunity to ask about. I said, Lou, I have to know about your car. Where did you get it? Does it still run? Is it dependable? Lou drove a 1982 Toyota Corolla. And he shared with me that he bought it from a fellow math teacher, for many of you in the room who know Gina Garland, um, when the car was only a year old at the time. He told me it ran well, had a few problems, he said, but it does still pass inspection. <laughs> and for the last five years, staff were comforted by seeing his car in the parking garage at ACHS in his reserve spot. In collaboration with the Scholarship Fund of Alexandria, which Lou loved, we made him a reserve parking spot sign that read, reserved for Mr. Louis Kokonis, inspiring students since 1959. This is one of the most special things that I was able to do for a fellow educator. And I didn't even really understand the impact until recent weeks in talking to former colleagues about the comfort it brought them to see his car there in the morning each and every day, because he would beat most of his colleagues to work. Lou was driven to be at school every day, even if it was by a 40-year-old car. So back to the parade. We continued driving on, and there were periods of conversation and also periods of silence. At one point, Lou turned to me and said, I hope I'm not taking up space for important people who really deserve to be here. I immediately asked him, that was, Lou, what are you talking about? He said, I don't understand the big deal. I'm just doing my job. I said, Lou, you have touched so many lives over these decades. And at that exact moment, through the cracked windows, we heard someone scream his name. He waved toward that direction. I said, see, Lou, people love you. And they really appreciate all that you have done for them. He waved toward that direction, stayed quiet, and looked pensive. I told him that sometimes we need to allow people to express their appreciation for what we do in this profession and for what we've done for them. Again, he didn't have much of a reaction and just kept waving. I was struck by his humility. What a humble man. This was a man who did what he did because he loved it. He expected nothing in return. And this says volumes about him. We ended that parade, exited the car, walked back to our cars, which were about 15 blocks away. And anyone who knows how Lou walks, I could barely keep up with him. <laughs> what a special day this was together, and I'll always remember it. Being honored to have been with him on this special day, not only to learn about him, but to realize what an amazing person he was. Lou's drive did not end during the time of school closures either. When our world was faced with a global pandemic and our nation was gripped with a racial reckoning, Lou focused on work and his students, even while schools were closed. I'll never forget getting a call from security at my home. One of our staff were in the building at the time when we were really strictly shut down. I demanded that they review the cameras, get a screenshot of whoever was in the building, and send it to me immediately. <laughs> well, when you know it, it was Lou. <laughs> he was in the building making copies. <laughs> we were virtual, but um, he was making copies. <clears throat> so while he's my initial response, I realized I had to change quickly, because this was Lou. This was someone driven by compassion and his passion for what he did, not just because he wanted to break the rules and go to the building, but this, you could not keep him out of this place. It was during this time that Lou always was also the first to sign up for some sort of textbook collection or distribution when we were also closed down. Mr. Eisenhower, his former student and former administrator here at ACHS, reminded me that, who's in the crowd here, 
that he was always the first name to pop up on the Google form when we would send it out asking for volunteers. And you would see Lou sitting, waiting for people to drive by so we could pass out textbooks, reading a calculus book. <laughs> he could not be stopped. This was the profession that drove him. So today, we honor this life, the achievements and the impact of a titan that stands above all other titans. I'm honored to have known a man unparalleled in virtue, character, and drive. He will be remembered by the many generations of students and their families that he touched throughout his career, which will be felt and remembered for generations to come. Thank you all. I'm so honored to have had just a little part of the celebration of Lou's life today. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ballas, Ms. Lewis, for such touching memorials as we remember Mr. Luca Conus. At this time, we're going to welcome back to the stage the ACHS Choir. Please receive them. And following the choir, we are so excited to welcome the long-term principal of then T.C. Williams High School, Mr. John Porter.
afternoon. Whoops, forgot. Good afternoon, everyone. I, too, uh, as with the others, am very honored to have been asked to say a few words today in remembrance of Lou Kokonis. In some ways, this is easy, but in many ways, much more difficult to find the right words because Lou was such an institution in our community. Lou and I worked together for 27 years, beginning in 1979, 20 years after he had begun his career in Alexandria. Little did I know when I left the high school in 2006 that he would continue working for another 18 years, doing what he loved and loving what he was doing. Because teaching was so much more than just a job for Lou Kokonis. During his career, Lou had a direct impact on thousands of kids that he taught. Over, in my estimation, at least 7,000, and I'm talking a direct impact of teaching in a classroom every day for the time that he taught. So about 7,000 kids. Additionally, he taught multiple generations of families. Students, he taught their parents, and in many cases, even taught grandparents and other relatives. As I've encountered former students that visited the high school after they had graduated, they would remark on how well prepared they were for college level studies. His former students would many times note how their college math classes were actually much easier than what they had experienced with Lou in high school. And in fact, they commented times that they'd look around and their college classmates were struggling with the coursework where they felt Lou students felt it was almost a repeat of what they had the year before. And besides working with students assigned to him, Lou would invite all takers to his afternoon and Saturday tutoring sessions, whether helping a student experiencing problems with algebra or providing his arduous AP prep in the spring, Lou was there to do what needed to be done to help students achieve and succeed. Some may not know that Lou was also involved with students outside the normal day-to-day -day instructional setting as he sponsored a number of student clubs and organizations over the years. On more than one occasion, when I told students wishing to start a club that they had to have a sponsor, a faculty sponsor, they would return a few days later with their club application indicating that Lou had volunteered to serve as their sponsor. I think the word on the street was that Lou was the go-to person, the go-to teacher in this arena, but he did it because he wanted to help as much as he could. Outside of his teaching ability and successes, what do I remember most about Lou? First, his calm and kind demeanor. While I imagine it happened, I can't remember, 27 years now, folks, I can't remember one time I saw him angry. His outward approach to others was always one of caring and concern. And while you've heard much today about his love for his 82 Toyota Corolla, there are a few of us in the room that will remember the precursor to that car. I'm sure his family does. The 1964, I think I got the year right, dark blue Pontiac Grand Prix. That was his baby. He enjoyed that as much as I've seen him enjoy anything, and in fact, actually once let me have a ride in it. Uh, I don't know how it outlived its life expectancy, but the Toyota just kept on, kept on going. I will also remember Lou's ability to adapt to changes in his profession. While he continued to employ what we now call old school, the old school approach to teaching, Many times, he was an early, if not first, adopter of some of the newer tools and techniques in the field. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't believe, believe Lou ever came around to new math, for those of us that are old enough to remember that experience. But watching him progress from chalkboard to overhead projectors to smart boards and computers was quite impressive. I remember early on in our early years together patting Lou on the back to be greeted by a resounding cloud of chalk dust emanating from his sport coat. However, as was mentioned earlier, if you view the piece completed to commemorate his years of service a few years ago, 
There he is handling a smart board, smart board like an expert in technology. Lou was also a trailblazer or a pioneer. He helped pilot dual enrollment before it became the thing of the day. About 40 years ago now, maybe 35, we had the experience of having about six or seven students um, kind of max out in math at the end of their junior year, having taken Calculus AB at the time with Lou Kokonis. And in talking with Lou, we arranged, because he already had a connection to Northern Virginia Community College, for him to teach advanced calculus differential equations to those seven students or however many there were the next year in order to allow them to continue their math sequence in high school, for which they also got college credit. Lastly, as you've heard mentioned, Lou was always one to volunteer wherever he could. I'm not sure if it was his friendship to Larry Trice that played a role, but as has been mentioned, Lou could be found chaperoning many a dance, ball game, or other event just to help out. You've already had this alluded to, but I too could see him sitting at a chair at a dance grading papers that he'd promised students that he'd have back to them by Monday. In fact, often he would request that he sit at the table at the main entrance to the dance because it allowed him the opportunity to spread out a little bit more and not get confused checking students in for the dance. Also, on more than one occasion, a student would show up to the dance, not for the festivities, but to sit with Lou for some tutoring or assistance with a particular math problem. I've had the opportunity in my career to work with a number of exceptional teachers and staff and feel I can say with confidence that Lou Kokonis was one of the best. His dedication, dedication to his profession, the school, the community, and most importantly, the students was unsurpassed. Those of us who knew him, who worked with him, who learned from him, are all the better for it. He was also one of the genuinely kindest people I have known, a gentle giant in the field, if you will. So on behalf of his former colleagues and the many students he helped along the way, I offer condolences to his family. May he rest in peace, and may all of us find peace in the fond memories we have of Lou Kokonis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Porter, and to our ACHS course for those selections and shared remarks. At this time, we are going to welcome to the stage our last presenters for tonight. We have heard mentioned throughout the evening several shout outs, acknowledgments of former students by Mr. Kokonis. And so with that, we would like to hear from former students and so we welcome to the stage at this time Thomas Lane, Sihara Seba, and Taylor Hoganson as they share in their experiences and memorials of Mr. Kokonis. And then following our students, I will join you one last time for some closing remarks. Please welcome Mr. Kokonis' students, students from the 2023-2024 school year. Luke Kokonis was easily the most dedicated person I have ever met. No matter what, he would always be ready to teach us with such genuine joy and positivity unseen anywhere else, with his old school teaching style captivating our classrooms each and every time. Mr. Kokonis would always be there every day after school and even on Saturdays to help us, and to think that he did this for over 60 whole years is just incredible. He even let us host the, the Mathematical Putnam Club in his room, where a group of us math nerds shaped by his very calculus, love of calculus, gathered to solve difficult math questions. One time he was even sweet enough to offer us cookies. But food items aside, his presence always made the room feel warm and comfortable. From dedicating his time to helping students to giving us donuts and pizza during class, Mr. Kohnitz was one of the kindest people I have ever met. I'm so honored to have been his student for two beautiful years. Do 
a beautiful soul. I had him for Calc BC, but it feels like I've known him since ages. Mr. Gaconis loved teaching so much that he wouldn't miss a single day. He even came to school just after getting his pupils dilated and with sunglasses on, he carried on his lesson. Because of his kind and loving personality, I liked stopping by and thanking him through cards, foods, and gifts from time to time. Well, on sorry, on Wednesday, the 3rd of January, I went to check on him after our long winter break. Even though he wasn't feeling well, he welcomed me with a big smile. Oh, hi, Sinar. I still remember his voice. He always welcomed me and really knew me as a person. Well, since he wasn't feeling well, I helped him pack up and then escorted him out of the building. As I held the door, I asked him to take care of himself. And then we said our goodbyes. He told me that he'll see me on Friday or soon. But now I know that I was the last person at AC to see him. I am sad that I won't be seeing him anymore. But I'm happy that we get to spend time together and make good memories as those close to our hearts never truly leave us. Rest in peace, dear Mr. Gokonis. Hey guys, I only got to know Mr. Kokonis for a few months. I was in his Calc BC class. It was the best math class I've ever taken. Um, really only partially because of the math. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I do love Raymond Integrals. And being able to take the, or to find the x-intercepts of a function or approximate them using Newton's method, you don't quite get there, but you almost do. Um, is very fun. But it, it wasn't the core of the class, it wasn't the heart of the class, that was Mr. Gaconis. And I, it, it really was awesome because of Mr. Gaconis, because of who he was, um, because of who he taught us to be, and because of what he represented. See, to me, Mr. Gaconis is math. He represented, in my mind, the joy of logic. Uh, he was this convergence point, this perfect equilibrium of clear thought and a strong heart. It's a rare combination. I'm sure you've heard this a lot, but he was an absolute shining example of a great man. He was about as good as they get. Um, and the unfortunate downside of that is that without him, a lot of us feel a little lost. I, I know I do. And it makes sense, because we've reached the end of an era, the Kokonian era, if you will. <laughs> and I, I do think the Kokonian era is a perfectly valid thing to call it because Mr. Kokonis was born in 1932. To put that into perspective, Alan Turing invented the Turing machine in 1936. World War II started in 1939, Mr. Kokonis was seven. Alan Turing cracked the enigma when Mr. Kokonis was nine. Five weeks ago, he was teaching calculus on a smart board and a TI-84 calculator, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but through all of that, which is an enormous expanse of time that I cannot even fathom, he was a pillar and he was a legend and he was a great person. But you would be wrong to say he passed away. We, we may refer to him in, in the past tense, as we have all night, and as we will continue to do, but beyond that, he lives on. His students, numbering in the thousands, as mentioned, have quite literally changed the world. Mr. Kakonis has changed the world. He's sculpted a brighter future for thousands of people through love, dedication, and math. And in a more metaphorical sense, he lives on up here. And he lives on with all of us. Every single memory we have of Mr. Kakonis is a piece of an incredible man. And with every story we tell, 
we keep them alive just a little bit longer. So, I mean, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to tell my favorite Mr. Kakona story to everyone who will listen. I hope you all do the same. Thank you so much to our young titans for joining us today and for sharing their experiences, their wonderful memorials of Mr. Kokonis and the wonderful educator that he has been even all the way through his last year teaching with us here today. Today it has been our intention to pause and recognize as well as celebrate the historic career of our dear friend Mr. Luke Kokonis. There have been two words in my opinion that stand out today as themes or as rallying calls as we prepare to depart this auditorium, and that is purpose and passion. For his family, first of all, we thank you for granting us the opportunity to recognize and celebrate him tonight for this wonderful career, his legendary work here in Alexandria City Public Schools. But we also recognize Mr. Kokonis for the once-in-a-lifetime service that he has rendered unto this whole Alexandria community. We thank him and we honor him for the examples of purpose and the examples of passion that he leaves with all of us to cherish his memory, his legacy. Indeed, I would like to commission us all as we leave the auditorium to commit ourselves to leading lives that are rooted in those two ideals, purpose and passion. Not just work that we tend to for our livelihoods and our financial obligations, but work that will invigorate the lives of those who cross our path. May we use our work to push other people forward so that they spend their career and the life that they live after our interactions with them reaching their full potential, pursuing their purpose and pursuing their passions. As attendees today, my hope as we face our tomorrows is that we will allow Mr. Kokonis' legacy to commission us to live lives that are rooted in passion so that the work we do every day is not work, but it's passion work that informs who we are and the service that we lend to our students, our families, and anyone who might cross our path. May our work be rooted in this and filled with light so that those who interact with us can feel and experience the love and joy that comes along with the work that we are doing. And so with that, Mr. Kokonis, in closing, we thank you, sir, and we owe you. May you rest well in power and purpose. Indeed, there is a auditorium full of people who gather today and say, we are all made better because we have known you. And so with that, we thank you to Mr. Kokonis' family, to our staff, our city community who have joined us here tonight. Thank you so much for your time and for your attention. And at this time, please feel free to consider yourselves dismissed. <laughs>